All right. Um, adjust my volume. Okay. So last week we did our test one. Um, use lockdown browser with monitor. It works very well. And upcoming test two and final exam will be used similar format. Okay. So lockdown browser um, with a monitor. Okay. Um, the class average is uh, 72 for test one. If your mark is above 72, you above class average. If not, you need maybe um, study harder, dig deeper, do better on test two and final exam. Okay. All right. Uh, so today is lecture six. Uh, lecture six is about uh, linear inequality in two variables, uh, and also how to solve system of inequalities by graphing application of inequality. Last coverage is the linear programming. Uh, for PowerPoint slides, for this lecture, I will just go over the examples and I will put the time and effort on tutorials uh, because the tutorial questions are similar to my lab questions uh, and the test, upcoming test two and final exam will be, as you can see from test one, you got to solve questions, right? But in the format of multiple choice questions. Test two and final exam may have a little bit short answer um, questions, okay? Because the questions are taken from the test bank, but most questions are multiple choice questions. Um, all right. So as usual, online students, if you have questions, type in your question in chat area or unmute yourself. Okay, so we all know those from high school, smaller than, equal than, greater than, greater equal to. So I will directly jump to the example. So how do you show on the graph x greater than negative two? So you draw the, the real number line, draw the real number line, identify negative two. Okay. And then x greater negative two. So means this part, this part are greater than negative two, not include negative two. So you use a round bracket. Okay. If you are asked to draw a graph x greater or equal to negative two, the difference is change the round bracket to square bracket. So the answer should be this. This is a zero, negative two. Uh, this is a line. So you have to change it to square. So it is square. And then this part. Okay, that is the difference between greater and greater equal. When you have greater, it is a round bracket. When you have greater equal, it is a square bracket. Uh, next one, show on the graph three greater than X. Three greater than X is the same as X smaller than three. X smaller than three. So this is the line. So you identify three, x smaller than three. So all these parts, all these parts are smaller than three. And here you use the round bracket, round bracket. If it is x smaller equal to three, 
you identify three, you use square bracket. So this part are smaller equal to three. Huh? Questions? Okay. Um, so we focus on the example. Okay, this example. So uh, please stop me if you have any questions or let me know if I'm going too fast. Okay. So six y greater 12 and graph the solution set. If you divide both sides by six, you get six y divided by six greater than 12 divided by six. So you get y greater than two. Okay. So this is the solution, y greater than two. Okay. Next, uh, solve this one. So linear inequality. So for this one, left hand side, you take away bracket becomes negative two z negative two times three, take away bracket for left hand side, copy down negative five z, right hand side, take away bracket, you got four z minus four plus nine. Now left hand side, collect like term, negative two z, negative five z, you got negative seven z, two times three, six. Right hand side, copy down four z, negative four plus nine is plus five, okay? Uh, and then you can move, uh, Maybe you can move this negative seven z to right hand side. So left hand side just have negative six. So four z plus five plus seven z. I just move negative seven z to right hand side. And then I got four z, seven z, eleven z plus five right hand side. Uh, after that, I move this five to left hand side. So negative six, negative five, smaller equal to 11 Z. Uh, left hand side, negative six, negative five, negative 11. Both side divided by 11, negative one, smaller equal to Z. And this one is the same as z greater or equal to negative one. So that is the solution. And the graphical solution, you draw a line, identify zero, negative one, because it is greater, you use the square bracket. So this part is z greater or equal to one, negative one. Any questions? Okay, so this is this example, uh, application. I give you a moment to read the question by yourself. So Brad has test grades of 86, 88, 78 on his first three tests in geometry. If he wants average at least 80 after his fourth test, what are the possible scores he can make on that test? 
So this is assume each test weight equally, okay? So let X represent the test score on the fourth test. So the average will be at least 80. These students take four tests, test one 86, test two 88, test three 78, test four X, the average of this four grid will be at least 80. Okay. Uh, so both sides you multiply by four. Both sides multiply by four. At the same time, you add these three numbers together, the result is 252. Is it to get rid of the denominator? Yeah, to get rid of the denominator. Okay. So after that, this four cancelled with this four, cancelled out. And the left hand side, you just have 250 plus X. Right hand side, 80 times four, 320. Okay. And move over. So you are here. 252 plus x greater or equal to 320. So move this to right hand side. So x greater or equal to 320 minus 252 x greater or equal to 68 is the final answer. Okay, so the student must get at least 68 so that the average is at least 80. Questions? Okay, next example. Graph. Negative one smaller than two, smaller equal to small, negative one smaller than x, smaller equal to two. Okay. So first, in the line, you identify zero, identify negative one, identify two. So x smaller equal to two, square bracket, x greater than negative one, round bracket. So this part represent x smaller equal to two, greater than negative one. Questions? Okay. Next example, solve this one. Okay, let's solve this one. This inequality with three parts, one, two, three, with three parts, okay? So we are going to working with multiple parts. First, every part add five. So four add five. Then every part add five. The reason is you want to get rid of this negative five. All the parts add five. And then you have nine smaller equal to three x and each part divided by three each part divided by three and you get three smaller equal to x smaller than five that is final answer so x greater than three this is Square bracket, smaller than five, round bracket. So from here to here. This is number three, this is number five. Questions? Inequality involved with three parts. Next, uh, this question, 
And uh, if the last question for PowerPoint, then we move on tutorial. And this question is the most difficult one so far we have encountered. This is the involved in linear programming, linear programming. And in my lab, you're going to have several questions about this. Okay, so we are take this one as example. And then we will solve two or three more questions from the tutorial. Also have similar questions. Okay. Okay. Uh, very complicated when you first look at this question. Okay. Uh, so I give you a few moments. You read the question first. Um, I'm sorry, the PowerPoint slide I posted on D2L does not have this example. So if you want, you can write down the notes, okay? Write down the notes for this example. This video is on my web, not my website, it's on YouTube website, I created, yeah. If you go to YouTube, search my name uh, and search business, um mathematics I do, uh, applied mathematics for mathematics okay you can lecture six you can get this video uh, okay let's look at this example a manufacturer produced two products air conditioner so i will just use ac ac represent air conditioner later on and the fans. Assembling process needs wiring and drilling. Each air conditioner takes two hours of wiring and two hours of drilling. Each fan go two hours wiring and one hour of drilling. Suppose 250 hours of wiring time available, and after 150 hours of drilling time used, each air conditioner sold at a profit of $26, each fan sold for a profit $16. Write down linear programming to find the best combination of air conditioners and fans that yields the highest profit. We are use two methods to do this. One, uh, mathematic method, the algebra inequality. Two, we are use Excel solver. So two different methods will produce the same result. Okay, if you write down based on this description, and you use, let X represent number of, okay, first of all, what is the question here? Can somebody summarize what we are asked to do for this question? So you're trying to find the, the you're trying to find a combination that yields the most profit. Correct. In, in terms of um, wiring and drilling. So specifically, what we are asked to do, find out how many air conditioners should be produced and how many fans should be produced so that you get the maximum profit. So we are asked for how many air condition we produce, how many fans we produce. Is that clear? That is the question. So I will use number X represent number of air conditioners to produce. How many produce? Produce 10 or 20 or 25, produce X. And how many fans will produce? Produce Y. So X represents 
number of air conditioning produced. Y represent number of fans produced. And then you make a table like this. We have two products, air conditioner and fan. And we also have two process procedure, wiring and drilling. Okay, for each air conditioner, you need two hours of wiring, two hours um, or two hours drilling. Okay. And for each fan, you need two hours wiring, wiring and one hour drilling. Okay. Um, 250 is the total number of wiring time. The maximum wiring time is 250. Maximum drilling time is 150. So the first step, you summarize the description into table format. Into table format. You see all the numbers in this table all the numbers in this table, okay? And then you write down the objective function we call objective function. What is our objective? We want to achieve maximum profit. And how do you calculate profit? When you sell one air conditioner, you get $26. Now I have X air conditioner, so, the profit from air conditioner is 26X. Do you agree? One unit is $26. X unit, 26X. And for the fan, one unit is $16. So I have Y units. It is 16 Y. Questions? Okay, so we want to maximum this objective function. This we call objective function. Okay, this is our objective function. Under condition such that, remember the maximum wiring time is 250. Okay, so produce one unit of air conditioner needs two hours. Now I have X unit. So how many wiring hours for AC? Two X. And produce one unit of fan. I need two hours wiring. How many hours for fan? So two Y. If you add the time for wiring for AC plus the time for fan, not exceed 250, so smaller equal to 250, okay? Uh, similarly, for drilling, the drilling time not exceed 250. So drilling time for air conditioner plus drilling time for fan, smaller equal to 50. I pause for a moment. So you need to translate this description into this table under those algebraic expressions in terms of objective function and the conditions. Those two are called conditions. Any questions? So what we are going to do, we want to find what is X, what is Y, so that you can maximum 26X plus 16Y on condition 2X plus 2Y smaller equal to 250, 2X plus Y smaller equal to 150. Any questions what we're supposed to do? I pause for a moment to see if you have questions. And once we are here, we have two methods to do it. One, we just use the graph. 
graph. So to use the graph, you will draw two lines. One line is 2x plus 2y smaller equal to 250. Okay. Um, you can draw this by hand, but uh, I just draw it using the um, draw the graph. So I'm going to, to show you. You don't have to use this software. Um, Okay, uh, let me see. So we are here, we are here. From here, we want to draw the graph. We want to draw the graph of two X plus two Y smaller equal to 250. So suppose um, this line, so we need to draw the straight line, 2x plus 2y uh, equal to 250. Draw a line for this one. This line, what is the slope? Anyone, can you identify the slope for this straight line? Remember, we talked about ax plus by plus c equal to zero. What is the slope? Negative a over b. If you have ax plus by plus c equal to zero, slope equal to negative a over b. Okay. So what is the slope for this one? Anyone? What is the slope? Yeah, negative two over two. So negative one is the slope. Negative one is the slope for this straight line. Okay. Uh, and then when x equal to zero, what is y for this straight line? Y equal to 250 divided by two, 125. So suppose this is 125, and this point represent when x equal to zero, y equal to 125. Okay. Next, when y equal to zero, what is x? Look, we are focusing on this equation. When y equal to zero, x equal to 250 over two, 125. So you point in, 125 here. Now you draw a straight line. This line is 2x plus 2y equal to 250. Questions? Okay, similarly, we need to draw another line here. 2x plus y equal to 150. So I'm going to use different color. Next, we want to draw 2x plus y equal to 150. How do you draw this line? You just take two special points. One, when x equal to zero, what is y? 150. So you found 150 here. This is when x is zero. And next, when y is zero, what is x? When y is zero, X equal to 150 over 2, 75. So 75 is here. Now you draw a line, straight line. This red line represents 2X plus Y equal to 150. I pause for a moment. Any questions? Okay, once you Get those two lines, so what? Look at here. 2x plus 2y smaller equal to 50. Which part represents smaller equal to 50? It is this one here. This part, 
this part represents the smaller equal to 50 here. Uh, sorry, maybe I press some buttons for sharing. We share my screen. Okay. And then 2x plus y smaller equal to 150, which part? It is this part here. Okay. And then you identify the physical area, it is actually this part. The maximum happened at here. So this is the possibility of a maximum profit will be achieved at those point, maybe at here, Maybe at here, maybe at here, maybe at here. Okay. Too complicated so far. What could be the maximum point? Yes, it is the, the correct answer is here, but you have to check other points. Right. So First, you draw the two straight line. The possible maximum point is all the points I labeled here. Could it be here, could it be here, could it be here, could it be here. The final answer is the two line intersect. And now you, it becomes, you need to solve equation, okay? So 2x plus 2y equal to 250. The other is 2x plus y equal to 150. Solve these two e equations. Okay. So if I call this equation one, equation two, I use equation one minus equation two. Left hand side minus left hand side, I got 2y minus y. Right hand side minus right hand side, I got 250 minus 150. Okay. Collect like term on left hand side, I got y equal to 100. I got y equal to 100. Once you got y equal to 100, plug this y into equation two. You solve for x plug y into equation two. So y is 100, equation two said 2x plus 100 equal to 150. So 2x equal to 50, x equal to 25. So the final answer, you need to produce 25 air conditioners and 100 fans in order to get the maximum profit. So what is the maximum profit? The maximum, the profit, the profit is 26X plus 16Y. So 26X is 25, so 26 times 25, Y is 100, okay? Uh, you got the final answer for this one. Okay. Um, do I have the final answer? Okay, did anyone get this answer or we can 25 times 26? I need 25 times 26. Oops. Uh, thank you. 25 times 26.
So the profit is 2,250. This is the profit. This profit can be achieved when you produce 25 air conditioners and 100 fans. Questions? So this is a linear programming, linear programming. Um, can we solve this question in Excel? The answer is yes. So in Excel, we need to use the solver. So now I'm going to use Excel to solve this question. So we have uh, air conditioner, we have a fan. We have two products. How many air conditioner? I don't know. I just said maybe zero. How many fan? I don't know, just say zero. Those number will be changed. The computer will automatically give me number. So now I just give them zero. Okay, uh, what is my objective? Yeah, so what is the maximum profit? Remember, okay. A2 represent number of air conditioners. It is like the X, but I cannot use X in Excel. This zero in B2 represent number of fans. Okay. So our objective is to maximum profit. Remember when you sell air conditioner, you got $26. One unit, you got 26. Now, how many units I have? I have A2. This is the position, the number in A2 represent number of air conditioner. It is like our X. Is that clear? So 26 X. Then plus when you sell, Fine, you get $16. $16 times number of fun, number of fun in cell B2. Any questions? This is our profit function, like 26X plus 16Y. Okay. okay, then under what condition subject to Subject to, so total number of um, wiring is 250, right? Okay, so how many wiring hours? You need two hours for AC. How many AC? You have A X AC, A2 represent X, X number of AC, and plus, you also need two hours for fun. Two hours for fun. How many fun do you have? You have Y. Y is B2. B2 represents number of fans. Okay. So this wiring time will not be exceed 250. This is wiring. And then for drilling, you need a two hour drilling for one AC. So right now you have X AC. So two times X, A2 is X, number of AC. And then for fun, you need one hour drilling. So one times B2. And the total number of hours for drilling is 150. Okay. So first step, you need to set up Excel like this. Uh, any questions? Any questions so far? I try to, okay. All right, once you set up this one, you use Excel solver. Uh, so you go to data, 
solver. If you do not have solver, if you are using PC, you go to data, uh, you go to file options, add ins. It's like how you add data analysis, okay? And if you are using the mark, you go to tools, tools, and then you directly have solver, okay? So I already add data analysis, add ins, so I'll just directly click solver. Set objective function. So remember B3 is my objective function to maximum by changing cell, by changing A2 to B2. A2 is X, B2 is Y. I want to solve X, Y. Subject to constraints. So I would, would add a button. So this wiring time smaller equal to 250. I click add. Next, drilling time is here, smaller equal to 150. I click OK button. And then make sure you check out, make unconstrained variables non-negative. Because we are talking about the number of fans, number of air conditioners we produce. And then select linear, linear programming, simple linear programming. And then you click solve, click OK button. Um, you get this answer, see? 25, 100, right here. Questions? I pause for a moment to see if you have questions. So two method, one is use inequality, okay, with the help of the graph. The other is use Excel solver to solve linear programming problem. Okay, that's conclude the PowerPoint presentation. Uh, shall we take a break? After break, we go over tutorial questions. Tutorial questions, okay? Uh, so shall we come back at uh, 7.20, okay, break. Back at 7.20. Is the solver steps are they in the video? Yes. Okay. Yeah. False answer in the video. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. Thanks. We have ten minutes. Uh, we have a a little bit, uh come back at seven twenty. Seven twenty. You are welcome. So twelve minutes. Yeah. Thirteen minutes. Twelve minutes. Thank you. 
All right, welcome back. Hope you have had a nice break. Are there any questions, anything? Okay, before break, we did a PowerPoint presentation, go over some concepts, techniques, and examples, as well as applications. Now we go over tutorials for lecture six. Question one, the velocity rate of an ultrasound wave in soft human tissue can be represented as uh, this number, uh, where 60 ms gives the possible variation in the velocity, express the possible velocities as an inequality. So if you are given number between, in this format, 1,690 plus minus 60, that means the number, the maximum could be 1,690 plus 60. The minimum could be 1,690 minus 60. So the number velocity V, is between those numbers. Okay. So this one represents this one. And you work out the left hand side. It is equal to 1630. By the way, this is the three parts in equality, okay? And this right hand side here, you got 1,750. So this is the final answer. Express the possible velocities as an inequality. This inequality has three parts. Questions? Okay. Uh, question two. An oil company plans to install seven storage tanks, each with a capacity of X liters, and four additional tanks, each with a capacity of Y liters, such that the total capacity of all tax is 378,500. If capacity Y will be at least 50,000, what are the possible value for X? That is a question. So you have uh, seven storage tank, each with capacity of X, then you have four additional tanks with capacity Y. Mm. 
So it should be at least A or B because the capacity wall will be at least 50,000. Yeah, so you talked about why will be at least. So what is the question here? The question is what are the possible value for X? Okay, so remember X, so you have seven tanks, each with capacity of X. So each tank is X, seven tanks is seven X, right? Each tank is X, seven tanks is seven X. And then you have four additional tanks, each is Y, so four is four Y, you have four. Total capacity, if you add these two together, that is the total capacity. Three, seven, eight, five, zero, zero. Is that right? Okay. And then Y at least, at least means greater or equal to means at least. Y at least is this. And the question asks you, what would be possible value for X? That is the question. Okay. Yeah, so those are given. So given solve for X. Okay, I will start from here. Okay. If I call this is one, this is two from two, from two, both side, I multiply by four. Why I need multiply by four? Because in equation one, we have four y. So four y greater or equal to Okay. And I call this is a three. And I plug in three into one. Plug three into one, I get seven X plus This number greater or equal to okay, and then seven X greater or equal to so seven X greater or equal to is isn't y 50,000? Shouldn't be y be greater or equal to 50,000? You are right here. Because this is y greater or equal to oh, 50,000. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that is our equation two. Okay. Uh, and now we need to solve this. Okay, and then both sides divided by seven, x greater or equal to, so x at least 25,500, that is x. Questions? All right. Our next question three. 
determine the value for x for which the radical represents a real number. Okay. In order for this radical to be a real number, so we need something on the top. This is a new meter position. This one greater than zero and denominator three minus x greater than zero. If they both greater than zero, this radical will be a real number. This is situation one. Or it could be if they both negative, because it is also negative, negative becomes positive. So this radical also a real number. Or this. Smaller than zero and three minus x smaller than zero. So if this or this, then it is a real number. Either this or that. Okay, so I this question I give you the hint because it involved in uh, solving inequalities. Either this one or this one you solve for x. Questions? And for this one, when you simplify this one, remember this one you can factor out x. This one equal to when you factor out x, you get this one. And the further factor out, you got this one. Just to factor the polynomial. Questions? Okay, so next question. Uh, solve quadratic inequality. And for this one, I will also give you the hint to situation if, if this quadratic is greater than zero, then you can directly take away the absolute sign. So it becomes this one. You just solve for this quadratic inequality. Okay. And if, this quadratic smaller than zero. And then when you take away absolute sign, you need to change the sign. You need to add negative. So you need to do this. Okay, so this is the hint I gave you. This is the, just a hint because the question asks you to multiple choice questions. One way to do it, you check A, check B, check C, check D. And there is only one answer, okay? So this is a take away the absolute sign, the absolute value. Okay, questions? Uh, question five, draw a sketch of the graph. 
So let's draw y smaller than seven minus x first. Uh, so I will maybe write down on the side. So let's do one by one. There are two. Then we do y smaller than square root, okay? So let's do, uh, maybe just do it here. Do this one. To do this one, let's draw a straight line, y equal to seven minus x. y equal to seven minus x. So this is x. This is why when you have to draw the line, the simple way just from the two points, two points designed a straight line. What are those two points? One is when x equal to zero, what is y? Yeah, seven. So you identify when x equal to zero, y is seven. This point. And then when y is zero, what is x? When y is zero, x is seven. Thank you. Seven. So here, seven. I found another point. Two points decide a straight line. These two points decide a straight line. And this straight line represents y equal to seven minus x. Okay, two points decide a line. So I finish this line. Okay, next, I will draw y smaller. Oh, I haven't finished. It is actually y smaller. The straight line I draw is y equal. Which part represents y smaller? This is the question I'm going to solve now. To do that, you pick any point. For example, this point, zero, zero. You plug in zero, zero into original function inequality here. You got y is zero, smaller seven minus zero. Is this true? Zero smaller than seven? It is true. So y smaller seven minus one, represent this play, this part represent y smaller than seven minus x. Is that clear? And this straight line divide the whole play into two parts. Which one represents smaller? This part represents smaller. You just click one point to prove. Questions? Okay, and next, um, let's draw this line, y smaller square root of 49 minus x square. Okay, and uh, you can just find some points. So next, we draw, we write down equation first, y equal to square root. 49 minus x squared. Okay. All right. So how do I draw this? You make a x, y coordinates. You pick some points, pick some positive x, negative x, and then you found y. Okay. So for example, uh, you pick x equal to, okay, when x equal to zero, what is y? Yeah. Yeah, y is seven. Okay, square root 49 is seven. So this graph must be, this is seven. Okay. And then you found another point, maybe when y is zero, what is x? When y is zero, x is uh, what? When y is zero, you got zero equal to square root of 49 minus x squared, right? 
Okay, and then you got 49 minus x square equal to zero, and you get x equal to positive negative seven. So when y is zero, x could be positive seven, x could be negative seven. Remember this graph is not a straight line. No, not a straight line. Okay, it is a curved. Okay, to draw the curve, you need more points, not just two points. For straight line, you can have two points, but for curved, you need more points. Right now, we just have three points. We need more. Okay, and now let's find more points. So let's say let's equal to x equal to maybe maybe equal to one. When x equal to one, what is y? When x equal to one, y equal to forty nine minus one square root. So y equal to square root of forty eight. And what is that number? You need a calculator. Square root of 48. Oh, thank you. Okay. So when x equal to 1, y equal to 6, okay, maybe here. This is a point. Okay. And when x equal to negative one, y still equal to this number because this is x squared. So there is another point here. When x equal to negative one. So you keep on going, found more points. And finally, this is the curve this square root represents. You found more points, then connect those points. Okay, all right, but we haven't finished yet. We just found this part, but the original question said, why is smaller? Why is smaller? Which part represents why is smaller? How do I know? So all of these are smaller. All of these are smaller. How do I know? You can take x equal to zero. Mm -hmm. All of these are smaller. So one should be yes. like c with the n and yeah. So shouldn't go if it's smaller than one should be four. This is not ten. This is seven here. Oh, sorry, it's seven. 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 Yeah. Okay. okay. So combine with the straight line. In straight line, we said this part is smaller. And this is the curve, this part, when you do combination, this is the correct picture. The correct answer is this. This represents y smaller than seven minus x, y smaller than square root 49 minus x squared. Any questions? All right, uh, next, question six. Found the maximum and the minimum value of given objective function of a linear programming problem. The finger illustrates the graph of the feasible points. Feasible points are the points, could be the maximum, could be minimum. So this z equal to 4x plus 4y is the objective function. The question asks you to find the maximum, minimum value. What you do, you plug in there are how many physical points? One, two, three, four, five, you plug in all these five into this equation, then you got five values. Out of those five values, you found the maximum and the minimum. 
okay? So let's do one by one. Let's plug in uh, zero three into here. When x is zero, y is three, z equal to zero plus four times three equal to 12, okay? And then we plug in uh, four zero. This point, four zero, x is four, y is zero. X is four, Y is zero, Z is 16. And then we plug in five, two. When X is five, Y is two, Z equal to X is five, Y is two. Okay, this is Z. And then X is five, Z is six, uh, Y is six, Okay, lastly, let's plug in zero six. Okay, z equal to when x is zero, y is six. So it's just 24. So you got four, five numbers, 12, 16, 24, 44, 28. Which one is maximum? 44. This is maximum. Which one is minimum? 12. So minimum happened at the point zero three. This is minimum. Maximum happened at the point five six. This is maximum. Questions? How to find maximum minimum value of the given objective function? Plug in all the points. The biggest one is maximum, the smallest one is minimum. Questions? Okay, next. Question seven maximum, maximize. The objective function R subject to given constraints. So R is objective function such that those are constraints. So how do we solve this? So first, let's plug in, create a straight line, 2x plus 5y equal to 10. Draw a straight line equal to 10. Because this is the straight line, I just need two points. So when x is 0, y equal to what? 2. So x is zero, y is two. And when y is zero, x equal to five. Here, x equal to five. So this straight line is here. Uh -huh. Oh no, not good. This is straight line, represent two x plus five y equal to 10. But original said smaller equal to this straight line divide the play in two parts, upper parts, lower parts, which one represents smaller? Which one? This one represents smaller. Why? You plug in any point here, it satisfies smaller equal to 10. Okay. okay, so we identify that part. Next, 
constraint x greater or equal to zero, y greater or equal to zero. So x greater or equal to zero. So it is here, x greater zero, y greater or equal to zero. And then this is original line. So the feasibility area is just this triangle. Okay. And in this triangle, you have three points. Three points. Plug in those three points into objective function, you get maximum value. So let's plug in. The first point is zero, zero. So R, when X equal to zero, Y equal to zero, R is zero. The second point, x is five, y is zero. So R, x is five, y is zero. Next, the last point, when x equal to zero, y is two. x is zero, y is two. Did you see which one is maximum? 25 is maximum. So this point is maximum point. Questions, maximize the objective function. Okay, question eight, question eight. Question eight, minimize objective function subject to given constraints. Huh? Uh, so first, let's draw a straight line, two x plus y equal to four. So this one, when x equal to zero, y equal to what? Four. So first we are draw a line, two x plus y equal to four. Okay, so when x equal to zero, y is four. Then when y equal to zero, x is two. Okay, x is two. So the straight line is here. Okay. So this line represents 2x plus y equal to 4, this straight line. And then which part is smaller? This part is smaller, smaller than 4. Okay. Questions? And then we draw x plus y equal to 1 x plus y equal to 1. So when x equal to 0, y is 1. So there is a point here. Okay. Um, maybe I want to use red color to represent. This is another, oops. This is a second line. Okay. Mm. I'll try to use different color to represent different line. This is four. This is two. This line is here. Next, I will draw x plus y equal to one. When x equal to zero, y is one. When y is zero, x is one. Uh, so there is a one here. There is a one here. Okay, so there is a straight line here. Okay, so after that, this is a greater or equal, see? Greater or equal to zero. So which one is greater or equal to zero? This part represents greater or equal to zero. 
Okay. Uh, and the smaller equal to four, smaller equal to four is this part smaller equal to four. And x greater or equal to zero, y greater or equal to zero. So we only consider positive x, positive y. Okay. So the net effect should be um, just this part here between those straight line x is a positive, y is positive. And we also need to solve the intersection of those two points. So maybe I will redraw the line so that it, um, I want to use technology to draw those straight lines so that you have a clear picture. Um, 2x plus y equal to 4. So I use this free software website is www.geogebra.org slash CES. Uh, maybe I'll read having the, the website www.geogebra.org bra.org slash ces. So what I want to do, I want to draw two straight lines. One is 2x plus y equal to 4. 2x plus y equal to 4. So this is the straight line, OK? And the other line is x plus y equal to 1. x plus plus y equal to one. Okay, this line, so. Uh, so now you can, yeah, this is better than my hand drawing, okay? So now I'm going to copy this one to one note to analyze the physical area, feasibility area, okay. So we are doing question eight now. Okay. Um, so X greater zero, Y greater than zero. So should it be this part? This is the area we need to consider. And this is the point plug in objective function. This point plug in objective function. This plug in objective function. One, two, three, four. Four points plug into objective function to find the minimum. Is that clear? Plugging those four points into objective function, you can find the minimum. We did this quite similar question. The smallest number is the minimum. Okay. Questions. Right. So this is a question eight. eight. Uh, question nine, graph in ecology. We did this kind of question lots of time. Can we skip this? Okay, we all did it. And this is the answer all that gave you here. Okay. So this part represents greater or equal to 20. Okay. All right. And the question 10, shall we skip? We also did similar questions several times, okay? Question 10, and also the answer is here. The yellow shaded area is the answer, okay? So we skip that. Uh, match the solution. Similar questions you can find by yourself. I give you the answer here. You have answer. Okay. Uh, question 
question 12. Again, you can try to, without looking at answer, to see if you can come up with this one. Do you want to do question 12 or want to skip it? What do you want? Skip? Oh. Thank you. Bounded means, see, for example, this area unbounded, it is unlimited, extend. This blue area is bounded, it has boundary, it has limit. Okay. Thank you for asking. Other questions? Okay, uh, we did an example for this one, the linear programming, okay. Question 13. Okay, let's do question 13. Uh, the problem is how do you translate this description into mathematical expression, okay? So I give you a few moments to digest the question. Make two types of water skins, a thick skin, Solomon skin. So there are two skins. So trick, trick skin, and Solomon. The trick skin requires Ten labor hours for fabricating. So there are two. One is fabric fabricating. Fabricating, and the other is finishing. So there are two procedures here. Okay. A uh, two product, two procedure, and the trick required ten hours uh, for fabricating and one hour for finishing. Solomon required five hour fabricating and one hour for finishing. See, you need to translate the description, type description into this table. Okay. The maximum labor hours for fabricating is 110. So the maximum one hour for fabricating is 110. And the maximum hour for finishing is 18. 18 is the maximum hour for finishing. Finishing. See, this question similar to PowerPoint example. Very similar, okay? And then what is the question here? The question asks you to find the set of feasible solutions for how many, how many trick skin produce? How many Solomon skin produce? Okay. Uh, Use the X and you are given X represent number of trick skins. Y is the number of slalom skin produced. Uh, and then ask you to write an inequality for the constraints on fabricating time. So See, this is fabricating. So the constraint for fabricating one trick costs 10 hours. You have X trick, so 10 X. One slalom need five fabricating hours. You have Y, 
So this hours cannot exceed 100 tons. So this is the constraint for fabricating. Is that clear? Constraint for fabricating. So this you had uh, should have uh, 10x plus 5y smaller equal to one ton. Fill in the blank. My last question. And then you are asked to find the constraint for finishing time. So look at this diagram. Finishing time is just x plus y smaller equal to 18. That is for finishing. X represents number of trick skin. Y represents number of slalom skin. Okay? So this part, x plus y smaller equal to 18. And any other inequalities, of course, x greater equal to zero, y greater equal to zero, because x represents the number of objects, y number of objects. Okay, question for 13. Um, shall we move to next question? Question 14, question 14. A manufacturer makes two types of water skins, a trick skin, slalom skin. So this is the trick, this is slalom. Okay. There are two departments, fabricating department, finishing department. For producing one trick skin, you need six hours fabricating, one hour finish. For slalom, you need four hours fabricating and one hour finish. The maximum fabricating hours is 144. The maximum finishing hour is 30. Okay. Questions, what is given? Then what is the question? Question A, if, the profit for a trick for $30, for slalom is $40. How many each type of skin should be produced to maximum profit? So let's solve for question A first. How many? So let's represent X is the number of Trick skin. Y represent number of slalom skin. Okay. And then we want our objective function. We want to maximum our profit. So maximum. Can somebody try to write down the objective function? Just try. What is the objective function? When you sell one unit of a trick skin, you get $30. Now I have X skin. So you have 30X profit for trick skin. When you sell one slalom skin, you got $40. How many slalom skin do you have one? So this is your objective function, 30x plus 40y. And you want to maximize this product, this objective function because it represents profit. So maximum 30x plus 40y. Okay. And what is the constraints? Subject to constraints. Constraints is, can someone try? 
what are the constraints for fabricating? How do you write down constraints for fabricating department? Okay, we can try together six X plus four Y smaller equal to 444. See this line here. Okay, six X plus four Y smaller equal to 144. Now I should have volunteered to give us another constraint for finish. Anyone want to try the constraint for finishing? The, um, Perfect. One X plus one Y smaller equal to 30, or just X plus Y equal to 30. Excellent. Questions? And once we are here, then we draw the street two straight line here. There are two straight line here. Okay, we draw two straight line. And there are other constraints, x greater equal to zero, y greater equal to zero. Okay, and then this question becomes, we did several times in the previous, this kind of question, we plug in the points. Okay. Uh, to accurate re represent the, so I'm going to use the software to produce these two lines, okay? So one is six X plus four Y. Okay, what I want, I want to 6x plus 4y. One hundred forty-four. What is this straight line? It is this line here. And then I need x plus y equal to 30. Is this line here? Okay. Now I want to make it bigger. Okay. Okay. So now I copy one note. Why is your oh, why is my one note? Okay, now you identify there is an intersection between those two lines, and this is a point, another point. Another point, another point found out. This is the feasibility area. Okay. So you have one, two, three, four. You have four points. Plug in those four points into objective function. See, 30x plus four py. Okay, and then you have maximum point. So usually maximum point 
happened at here, intersection here, this point usually. Okay, so that is how you found uh, maximum point. Any questions? And you can use Excel solver to do it as well. We already demonstrated. Okay, I will skip Excel demo here. Okay. Um, no, this one, uh, the mark links, the zero thirty. Um, okay, I said usually the maximum point happened here, but for this question, the maximum point happened here. This point is zero thirty. If you plug zero thirty, this one is maximum. Let's try. Oh. Okay, so if you plug x is zero y thirty, you got zero plus forty times thirty, you got this number. And if you plug this one, this number will be smaller than this one. So this point is the maximum point. This one here, you have to try all points, including this one, this one, then to find a maximum value. Is that clear? How do you find maximum? Yeah. Questions, online students, questions? Okay. So this is a question A only. Now question B. Discuss the effect on the production schedule and the maximum profit if the profit if the profit for slalom skin decreased to 25, so what is the maximum profit? How many each product you should produce? Exactly, exactly the same procedure, except the original profit for slalom is 40. So instead of 40, you change 40 to 25. So question B, so we are going to maximum 30x plus 25y. Okay, and the same constraints, 6x plus 4y. X greater equal to zero, y greater than it. So this is question B. Just change 25 to, change 40 to 25. Repeat yourself for question A. Exactly the same question, just change 40 to 25, that becomes question B. Questions? Okay. Um, question C. Question C. So change to 45. So question C becomes 30x plus 45y maximum this function subject to copy down the same constraints function. So that is question C. This is question C change to 45. Okay, any questions for question this one? Question 15. I give you a moment. You read the question. This is investment. What does CD Investment CD. Yeah, it is a financial product. Exactly what it stands for, I don't know. 
uh, maybe we can find out Google, Google, what is CD in financial products? This is financial instruments. Uh, D represent deposit, I forgot to see. Uh, CD, it is kind of deposit, yeah. Oh certificate, of oh, certificate deposit, thank you. So certificate of deposit, CD. Okay, let's read this together. An investor has 80,000. No, I want to use, have 80,000. You have two financial products. One is CD. The other is mutual fund. CD yield nine percent. Mutual fund yield six percent. Mutual fund require minimum of nine thousand. An investor requires at least twice as much should be invested in CDs as in the mutual fund. The question is, how much should be invested in CD? How much invested in mutual fund? What is the maximum return? This question is very practical. If you have this amount of money, so you want to allocate to two financial products. How do you allocate? Okay, let's X represent. You invest X amount of money in CD. You invest Y amount of money in mutual funds. And then you want to maximum 9% times X plus 6% times Y. That is your objective function. That is your objective function. And the constraint is, X plus Y equal to 80,000. 2X greater or equal to Y. Y greater or equal to 9,000. Those are the constraints. And of, of course, X greater or equal to zero. Y greater or equal to zero. So once you can write down this linear programming expression, we saw this kind of question a lot of time already, right? So the problem is how do you translate from here to here? Questions? Okay, shall we move on? Uh, this is the last question. Yeah, this is the last question. Question 16. Question 16. Question 16. Okay. Psychiatrists use two types of boxes with mice and rats. The amount of time that each mouse and each rat spends in each box per day is given in this table. What is the maximum number of mice and rats that can be used in experiment? How many mice and how many rats produce this maximum? So 
So again, the important thing is to find the objective function from the constraints. So let's use X represent the number of miles. Let's use Y represent number of rocks. So our objective function, we want to maximum X plus Y. We want to maximum X plus Y. And the constraint is subject to 20x plus 10y smaller or equal to 720, 10x plus 20y smaller or equal to 660. x greater or equal to zero, y greater or equal to zero. Those are the constraints. And once you are here, this kind of question we did a lot of times, right? You draw two straight line, you find some points, you plug in those points into the objective function and find the maximum. The answer is given here. Okay, those are the answers. Any questions? In summary, today we did solving inequalities and we also did linear programming. Okay. Uh, we didn't take a second break. Uh, the lecture ends, but uh, we still have some time. I love your questions. I welcome your questions. If you have questions, you stay in class or stay online. If you do not have questions, we're done for today. Thank you so much. Uh, sorry for my lateness. Uh, next week, uh, maybe not a problem because I booked the morning bar. In the morning, I will leave my home. Hope I will be here at six o'clock. Okay, next week should be fine. Okay. I traveling, maybe some other students don't know. I traveling from Niagara Falls to here. Okay, thank you again. Good night. Uh, I'll see you next week, next time. So stay here if you have questions. Bless you. <laughs>